Hi everyone, JJ here with the Out of Value. Welcome. Well, today I'm going to talk about Tesla. For the first time in a few months, I bought Tesla stock back in late December 2022 when it was in the low 100s. And I did a few videos on that, but I haven't talked about Tesla very much lately. But today I want to respond to a Wall Street Journal article about Tesla and a video by Joseph Carlson after hours. Joseph was talking about the article and I wanted to give my thoughts on it, respond to what he said and to the article itself. The Wall Street Journal article lays out why Tesla's recent Recent stock rally, huge stock rally since the beginning of the year doesn't make sense and they lay out arguments for that. So it's a good time to talk about that. I'll give my thoughts on that and respond to what Joseph's also said. I'll point out that Joseph isn't a Tesla shareholder. He's not bullish on the stock and he's laid out reasons for that before. I am, as I said, I'm a shareholder since I've been looking at the stock for a long time. I thought it was too expensive. I thought that it got into a bubble around 400. Other people disagree with that and I felt it was worth buying around that 125 when I bought it. There's, I made a video about that. You can go back and look at that. I'll put a link in the description and at the end of this video. But right now, let's get into the article. So as Joseph points out, and I'll put a link to his video in the description, that this article is a bare thesis and that goes through why they think Tesla's not in good shape or at least not worth the huge valuation that it's at right now. He calls it a hit piece on the company. It wouldn't be the first media article that does that, but it does go through things point by point. So it's a good bouncing board, a good sounding board for thoughts on where Tesla's valuation is at right now and what's happening with the company. So I'm going to go through the points in this Wall Street Journal article and see if I agree with Joseph about it along the way. In this video, Joseph starts off by saying why he doesn't own Tesla. He says he thinks it's a good company in a bad industry, the auto industry. He says it's a lot of well-capitalized competitors and so he thinks basically competition's coming and that they won't do well because the auto industry is not a great industry. And I agree with that. The margins are low and there's a lot of competition over many decades. It's been intensely competitive. So any kind of uh, competitive advantages have been uh, competed away but I think it's changed now with EVs, this development of EVs coming up. The incumbents are make, trying to make uh, EVs. And one of Tesla's main competitors right now is BYD in China. I think they're a good company, but they don't have the same competition in the US. And all these other companies are struggling. Most of the auto companies have this ICE legacy, the internal combustion engine legacy, which they're going to have to ramp down over time at the same time they're ramping up EVs and of course Tesla is just EV only so there's an advantage there an innovation advantage a first starter advantage how long can that last Warren Buffett talked about how Ford had this 20 year advantage when it started had the Model T but it didn't last it got eaten away so it's going to be interesting to see if that happens but I don't agree with Joseph here that Tesla doesn't have an advantage I agree that it's not a great industry, but I think it's it's changed a little bit. I think Tesla does have an advantage. And there is this saying that Tesla's not just an auto company where super bulls say that all the time. And that is true, I think. Just today, there was more AI news about how they're ramping up the AI dojos starting to be in action and they're going to ramp up the, the power, the capacity of that over time hugely. There are quite a few strings to Tesla's bow and they're becoming more over time. We just heard news in the last week or two about the charging stations where Tesla's really coming out ahead on there that the more and more companies want to use it. They all want to use it. It's going to become the standard. So Tesla's in a really good position then. So it's kind of like if they own the petrol stations as well as the cars in a way, if you think of it like that. In terms of not being a car company, that is true to a certain extent, but it's also true that it mostly is at the moment. Energy storage is another area that I'm kind of excited about, even though it's not as glamorous as cars and vehicles and the Cybertruck and all those things. Elon has said that it has the capacity to be bigger than auto, and I do believe that. If you look at what's needed around the world to get to sustainable energy, I think Tesla could play a huge part in that, and it's kind of going on in the background all the time as they ramp up. Having said all that, cars are the main focus and the main source of profit, and revenue. Joseph points out that Tesla is trying to build an ecosystem like Apple. If you think of the iPhone and they've got the App Store. So I think Elon Musk is definitely thinking like that. He's trying to build out an ecosystem where there's customer capture there. So we have a number of Tesla products and we're in this ecosystem. And I think that's entirely possible. I can see what Elon Musk is trying to do there. And the charging stations are part of that. And we have other companies wanting to use those as well. So it could be a good position for Tesla going ahead, but we just have to see. We don't know the final destination. There are guesses on the value of the company, certainly at the final destination. Say 10 years ahead, it's very hard to see 10 years ahead. I'm sure Elon Musk has in his head and there's a roadmap there, a master plan. Part of it's on the ability of him to do that. Things could happen. There could be black swan events where maybe he dies in a 
plane crash, for instance, what would happen then? I tend to think that Tesla does need Elon Musk. He's one of the best entrepreneurs of our times, of our generation, you could say. And so I think it needs him, like Amazon needed Jeff Bezos until a certain point. I think to build out this ecosystem with all of these products, all of these services working together, including AI, including storage, including cars and other things, then it's going to need Elon Musk to see it through. If you look at what he's done with SpaceX, landing rockets simultaneously backwards. I mean, it's talked about the short side of the argument says that some things will work and some things don't. Just because one thing's work doesn't mean that the other things will too. But Tesla has been a big success story and I think it'll go on. But the valuation is a big question mark. I thought it was too expensive at 400 at the time. Way back when it was, that was a bubble. There was an EV bubble there and it's rocketing back up now. I thought it was worth buying when I did it. But is it worth buying now? Joseph points out that the Tesla stock is being rewarded for what investors think is going on at the company. It's back up to around $850 billion valuation, which is huge for a car company. That's for sure. And it's up 140% year to date. I'm up about 107%. So I've managed to capture quite a lot of that gain since the near lows late last year. As Joseph says, investors are getting a renewed enthusiasm for Tesla for various reasons. And it's been not being valued like a just a car company again. But it's not up to its all time high, which was over $400. Still a way to go for that. But it's kind of looking like it could get there. We don't know. We'll have to see what happens. The market goes up. The market goes down. It's, we've certainly seen that over the last, well, years with Tesla. It tends to go on this roller coaster ride. So I'm not surprised. And I'm not surprised when it went low too, down to about $100, although I bought it just above that. In fact, I thought Tesla stock could have gone down well under $100 at the time. It would not have surprised me. Other people said that. There's a video I responded to saying Tesla $60, which I put in the description. It would not have surprised me, but I thought where I bought it was cheap enough. If it had gone down more, I would have kept buying more because I thought that it represented good value at that stage. Certainly not at 400 when it was valued at 400. It was a bubble, an EV bubble. Around the Rivian IPO after that was kind of, to me, the height of the bubble. It was just ridiculous ridiculous the valuation that Rivian was so things have come down a lot since then but now Tesla's going going back up so we'll have to see what happens. So the Wall Street Journal article starts off by pointing out that the market valuation Tesla's market valuation has gone up 250 billion dollars just in a month and in 30 days which is even a lot by Tesla standards by the roller coaster of Tesla that's even a lot. So there's a huge amount of renewed enthusiasm for the stock and the question is why why now what's going on. So if we look at the story of the stock price as Joseph does, we can see that the stock price went from around 260 in the third quarter of last year down to just over 100 was the low. This was after a lot of talk about slowing demand. Elon was talking about recession coming. He was pretty concerned about it. He was saying that publicly for quite a few months, preparing people for it. And so people started to think that Tesla had slowing demand and margins went down a little bit as well. So these, these things combined for sentiment to just go through the floor and it went down very very quickly just as it's going up very quickly now a lot of tester bulls especially in social media were pretty shocked by how low it went a lot of people thought the 400 wasn't even that expensive i on the other hand as i've said thought that it was in a bubble at 400 at the time so since that stock price low of just over 100 it's had two pretty good runs it had one big run and then it trailed off and then it spiked and it's almost been parabolic for this last month quite incredible to see really so the wall street journal article has a crack at explaining why this has happened and also why they think it's not justified and of course AI comes up first they mention how the run in the last month or so this huge run it was since Nvidia reported and the forecast for sales was kind of through the roof and that is when Tesla stock also took off to the point where it's had this huge parabolic run in the last month Along with other stocks, I should mention there are anything to do with AI. Some companies only need to mention that they're working on AI and the stock goes up. But any kind of company that's had any time in the past to do with AI, people are focusing on that and the stock's kind of taken off. But Tesla's not the only one, but certainly it's had a huge run. Other AI related stocks such as Google and Microsoft have had a good run too. I made a video about 
Google's announcements about all their AI developments. These other stocks have had a run too, but Tesla's stock has had much more of a run. People obviously consider Tesla to be an AI stock. And even today, the, as I said, the announcement about Dojo. So the market's buying into this idea that Tesla is an AI company. Elon Musk has been saying that. It's an AI company and a robotics company first. And the cars are actually robots on wheels and they're attached to AI and that's playing out more and more. So the market is really behind this idea and driving the stock up because of that. And the Wall Street Journal was pointing out that that's not really true. It's a car company, it's not an AI company, and this is part of the hype that's driving the stock higher. So the excitement in AI has largely been around the focus on these large language models from OpenAI and Microsoft is a huge investor in that and what Google's doing and other companies. So that's driving the hype, the excitement around AI and Joseph says that he doesn't see the correlation between that and what Tesla's doing. But of course, there has been AI going on for a long time. Tesla's been involved in AI and building it. So there's just this focus on that. I think what's happening, we're at this time where it's kind of just hit this critical mass point of attention and that's driven the stock up. But Joseph really doesn't buy into this. He talks about AI not being a really big thing at Tesla at the moment and with FSD. It's associated with FSD, but FSD is not at the point where it can make a difference to the valuation. It's kind of all future value. If it works, Elon Musk has said that Tesla really has no value unless FSD really works and the economics kick in for that. And so Joseph is not seeing that happening. And indeed, it is a future thing that hasn't happened yet. And the valuation has kind of gone nuts based on that it will happen soon. Elon Musk has said that FSD will be on the roads. Robotaxis will be happening, helped along by Ark and Kathy Wood and people like that who've said it's going to coming soon, it's coming soon, but it hasn't really eventuated just yet. It's always been talk about robo taxis suddenly waking up and FSD working to a point where it's full self-driving everywhere. But there's also these regulatory hurdles that will have to be overcome all around the world. It's not just as if uh, they'll suddenly be able to drive themselves with no uh, regulation oversight it will take time so joseph points out that full self-driving is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and the wall street journal points out that they think this is getting a lot more attention now sort of renewed interest in this backed up by ai and this is what's driving the share price and it shouldn't be so because it's it's quite far off they think and it just shouldn't be added to the valuation it's a huge amount of the valuation so the wall street journal article points out that we have ai and then we have full self-driving and then the leap to robo taxis and they think that the robo taxis is built into the valuation hugely and, and that's hugely in the future it's not there yet it's questionable whether it's going to work if all these uh, robo taxis suddenly wake up and work in the regulatory uh, frameworks in place and it can just happen so they think all this future valuation is built into it and i think that's true to a certain extent so this huge market valuation for tesla now it's gone back up it's based on the renewed interest the renewed enthusiasm for all of these things ai fsd leading to millions of robo taxis around the world so the wall street journal article points out there are other companies out there like gm's cruise and google's waymo who are actually more visible doing more out there in in geofence locations. So Joseph points out that these competitors, these companies that are actually working robo taxis in a small way, but in geofenced areas, that these geofenced areas, once they expand, if you think about the cities in the United States, for instance, if these areas are expanded, they're working now, if they're expanded to different cities over time, then that will actually account for 99% of the use cases. Whereas Tesla is trying to make robo taxis work everywhere on all roads all the time. And so that's a big leap to get to there. But then the valuation is dependent on that. Investors are thinking that this will happen and that Tesla will, will leap ahead. We just don't know how that's going to play out. I do agree. I think what Google's doing and what GM's doing with Cruise is actually good. And I think that's true. There's no reason why the, the geofencing could be it couldn't be expanded incrementally and work in cities. And you take a cab in around New York City, for instance, or, or any of the cities in the Western world. So they will take account of many of the use cases like Uber started off in the in middle of cities and they're expanded out that it could happen the same way, robo taxis. So I think many Tesla investors are thinking that robo taxis will kind of just turn on, wake up 
and work out all over the world quite quickly but that may not actually be the case they might have more competition from that point of view so it's bargaining on something in the future and putting a lot of valuation on that so i do somewhat agree with the wall street journal article here and joseph who says that there are other companies doing good things in this area and they are robo taxis in a very small way and it, but it's not what the grand vision that Tesla sees for it. So the next possible explanation for the share price going up so much, the Wall Street Journal points out, is the supercharging network where Ford and GM have signed up to use Tesla's supercharging network. And this is another reason or the reason for the share price going up so much. And so that increases Tesla's chances of making money from that or being the sort of standard default of supercharging network. And I think that's true. That I think that adds to it, all of these things, because that is truly amazing. Though Tesla's been building out the supercharging network for years. I remember back years ago when, when Elon stated his plan for that, people really didn't believe it, but it's been building all this time. It's something that the other companies have kind of given in on really if you you could say that the standard is going to become tesla and the other companies are going to be using it so as i said it's like if you think of it like owning the petrol stations really isn't it and so that's a really good position for tesla to be in and it adds to this valuation as to the enthusiasm joseph doesn't put much value on this supercharging network and what's happened doesn't put much into the valuation for that the article points to dan ives analyst who talks about this being an aws moment for tesla where they started their cloud service, they've been building it for years and quietly just in the background and then it's become a huge money driver, a profit driver for Amazon. And Dan Ives thinks that this supercharging network will be that for Tesla. It remains to be seen whether it will be actually a profit driver if they'll make much money out of it. But in terms of an ecosystem, Joseph talked about the ecosystem like Apple. I think this is a very strong case for that where Tesla's building this ecosystem where people have to use their products and services. And if you do own Tesla products, it's hugely beneficial to you as a customer that the supercharging network there. And even if you have other products from other companies that you're still using the their standard and their supercharging network. So I think this is an important step. The, the news that, that came out about that, I think was hugely important, more important than Joseph is giving credit for. And Tesla and Elon Musk has put Tesla into a really good position there with to do with the supercharging network. And the Wall Street Journal is pointing out that this is one of the reasons for the big valuation. They think it's not justified, but this definitely, I think a lot of people have seen the importance of that. They've certainly still seen the news of that where it was hugely symbolic that these the heads of these companies especially GM was saying that we're going to use Tesla and, and uh, there was a meeting on Twitter, a very uncomfortable, awkward announcement with Elon Musk on Twitter about that. So GM's been put into this position and Ford also of using Tesla's network, which they wouldn't like, but they can see that it's the way forward and it's put Tesla in a very good position. Joseph also thinks that this is actually the most plausible because of Tesla's ecosystem, the energy, the services and the automotive working together and I do think this too that Tesla is building this hugely powerful ecosystem as I said the energy is really important not much is really said about that except for when it comes around to earn, earnings when we can see that the growth really happening there and there's this AI so all these things are working together I think what Elon Musk is doing is thinking it holistically about all these things working together as an ecosystem and I think some investors can see that many investors can see that whether the valuation is correct at any one time the market goes up the market goes down the market goes all over the place like a roller coaster and with Tesla it's hugely volatile and may continue to be so I thought that it might go up at a slower rate when since I bought it at 125 it went down I thought it would go might go down further but I thought that it might go up at a slower pace this time more steady after that bubble after the bubble like conditions that it went through but it turns out that it's continuing to be hugely volatile so I think Joseph is starting to get it a bit here he's seeing that the services could be hugely lucrative for Tesla in the future especially if there are high margins on those services if it's if people are captured in this ecosystem just like apple if you look at how apple operates they make so much money from from people being in the ecosystem the app store the 30 percent commission on that app store so tesla and elon musk will be looking at that and thinking about how can we work this even though it, autos are involved they want higher margins and they can see places they can see reasons and opportunities for higher margins in the future if they build this ecosystem, including the supercharger network, including the full self-driving and other things too, Serv actually servicing the vehicles, which is probably less than a combustion engine car. But 
if they can make money from a lot of these services, these these wraparound services or, or services inside the ecosystem, if they can build that, and Joseph's seeing that they are building this ecosystem, investors are starting to see that, whether it's worth what it, the market valuation now. The market puts different values on it from day to day, but we are starting to see that Tesla is building this very strong ecosystem. Whether they can pull it off or not is still unknown, but... If anybody can do it, Elon Musk probably can because we've seen him build multiple billion dollar businesses and services and innovations that people have thought that it wouldn't happen, he couldn't do, including SpaceX. So if anybody can probably do it, it is Tesla and the other car companies, you'd have to say they're not doing this to the same extent. They don't have all these divisions. They don't have energy. They don't have the foresight and vision that Tesla has. But it remains to be seen how much this will be in the future. What's the destination? One of the reasons that I wanted to wait, I was patient to buy it when it when it was low, when I thought it was low enough, is because we don't really know the destination. We don't know whether all this will work, but it's kind of betting that it will. What is the valuation in, say, five or ten years if this works out? And also if it doesn't work out, if some of these things don't work out, if, if the energy storage has low margins and they don't make money in some areas and more in others, or if the auto business does become very competitive, how can Tesla still make really good margins and still do well within this ecosystem that they're building? That is kind of the question for me. And I think the destination is pretty good for Tesla. Certainly didn't want to buy it at $400 when the market valuation was so high. I'm more interested in small caps because I think that if it's a small cap company, say under a billion, under two billion, it's got the possibility to grow much more. The previous video I made was about Chuck Acra and his hundred baggers and how he's been able to get multi-baggers, this three-legged stool philosophy that he has. And he starts with companies that are really small. He has in the past and stayed with them for years and years. Tesla is already a massive company, so how big can it really get? Some people think that the possibility of the robots they're building could be another hundred. These things are at an experimental stage. And companies like Amazon threw a lot of things against the wall. Some worked, some didn't. And I think Elon Musk has this philosophy of trying new things, starting up new things. Monash Pabrai has this concept of spawner companies. I think Tesla is like that. Look how many businesses, how many sectors it spawned from scratch. And some of them may not work out, but it is kind of in this ecosystem. So they're spawning new companies new sectors that all work together. I think that's the grand plan and I think that a lot of investors see that whether there's too much being valuation being put on it or not enough at any one time. There's so much analysis whether it's right or wrong but what's the destination point in five to ten years and people have hugely different ideas about that. I kind of like a margin of safety where I thought that uh, just over a hundred dollars around there the low hundreds was a decent margin of safety at the time. A lot of people will disagree with me. A lot of value investors will strongly disagree and a lot of growth investors will think that that was really really cheap for where it was from where it's going to be in the future. So the Wall Street Journal doesn't buy this ecosystem of services idea. They don't think that that's going to be a thing. Joseph is buying it. He does think that that's the best, most plausible and has the best future for Tesla to build this ecosystem like Apple has. He doesn't own the stock. I own the stock and I think it's got a good future. The last explanation that the Wall Street Journal gives is that Elon Musk hired a CEO of Twitter and so investors have been very concerned about Elon Musk spending so much time at Twitter, his focus is off Tesla, and that was cited as a reason that Tesla's stock price went way down when all that was happening. It seemed like his attention was elsewhere, and now that that has moved on, where he's, he's, his attention seems to be a little bit less, well, it doesn't really, it doesn't really, but he has hired a CEO and he thinks that the relief from investors has made the stock price go up. That's probably part of it, but really not a big deal. I think that was way overblown in the first place. I mean, it added to the negative sentiment. There seemed to be a negative news and upon negative news. And that's what happens with some stocks that go down more than 50%. I think Tesla was down more than 70% at the point where I bought it. It was, it was over 70% and uh, could have gone down more, but that was a huge amount. A lot of people were shocked by that. And the story about him being so preoccupied with Twitter that it was uh, hurting Tesla. And I think that's a little bit overblown, but that has kind of been relieved a little bit too now. So Joseph concludes that he's not going to be buying Tesla stock at these prices. He didn't buy it when it was in the low hundreds. So I don't see why he'd change his mind on that now. He says that he's pretty encouraged by that services sector that they need to build this ecosystem step by step. 
So that, that, that's good. But all of these things need to fit in place. Everything has to go perfectly, which I think was the case when it was around 400. Everything was priced to perfection and even more. The, so much of the future was priced in. I actually do think it's like that now. I wouldn't be buying it at these prices myself. That's not investment advice at all. I'm just saying that I bought it in the low hundreds and I wouldn't be buying more. I bought it because it was low and I think it's got ahead of itself again, but that's just my opinion. Other people think that it's worth way more already. And I think that the company itself is going well. As I said, the share price can go way up and down, but it's the destination that matters, sort of a destination analysis on on where Tesla's gonna be in 10 years is what's important to me. And I wasn't really interested unless the price dropped way low as I thought or low enough to pick it up. I still think that it's kind of a, was a multi-bagger stock from, from then, but it's gonna need years. And I, as I said, I would have liked to see more steady growth in the share price, not these huge roller coaster moves. There are a lot of retail investors in the stock. Even Wall Street gets excited. There's a lot of excitement on Wall Street about AI, so they can get carried away with FOMO just like other people can. And I do think that's a big reason for the stock taking off, but all of these factors that, that were mentioned in the article are reasons whether they're justified or not. It'll only be proven in the future, but I think Tesla as a, as a company is doing really well. All right, as I said, I made the decision to buy Tesla stock in late 2022. I'm gonna put a video up here of what I was thinking back at the time if you wanna go and check that out. And I'll put it in the description as well for those watching or listening on other platforms. And also we're past well over a thousand subscribers now across the two main video podcasting platforms, YouTube and Spotify video. So if you're not subscribed yet and you've got this far, definitely think about subscribing so you can get more like this in the future. Thanks for watching or listening and I'll see you next time.